seriously. When has good judgment ever benefited anyone? Seriously. And with that, he was back. What's up, everybody? Tim Castleman here, and welcome to the often thought of, rarely recorded, definitely rarely released, Two Drink Tim podcast. Episode number, I have no fucking clue, because it has been that long. Let me tell you, folks, I have pre-gamed hard for this one. I'm enjoying some Breckenridge spiced rum and some OG Kush, all right? That's all I'm saying. Definitely am partying off of last year's data, as my buddy Colin would say. And forgot that, you know, this, uh, I haven't been in game mode in a while. So this is going to be kind of a preseason game. This is, you know, I don't want to say it's going to be the fourth game of the preseason. I'd like to think we're not resting all our starters, right? You're still going to get to see the big names, get the big pops, the big hits, the big catches. But I also don't want it to be week one where it's all rookies and fumbling and what the fuck's football and all that stuff. But what it is, is it's back. The Two Drink Tim podcast returns, and I am happier than ever to say those words. Let me tell you what has happened, my friend, and why I have been noticeably absent in the last couple months. So, I decide at the end of the year, you know, we're kind of planning for 2016. We're like, yeah, what do we want to do? I got to, you know, fit this clock into this wedge and Tetris this and Tetris that. And the podcast kept coming up. And what do I want to do? And what do I want to do? And, you know, do I enjoy it? Do I have a good time? And I started thinking like, you know, I don't really enjoy it because I'm trying to make it super professional in terms of, you know, always having well thought out topics and bullet points and all that stuff. And I mean, clearly no one would want to hear from me. Right? No one would want to just hear my opinion on things or what's bothering me this week or what's going on in the life of Tim Castleman. No one at all would be interested. Right? Fucking idiots. Okay? Uh, and then I go, well, you know, and the stuff I'm sharing about my personal struggles and therapy and my successes and failures and ups and downs and, you know, as I lovingly would sometimes refer to it, the Suicide Watch podcast, like, no one wants to hear about that stuff. They want to hear about the perfect life, or they certainly don't want to, you know, go see like a Louis C.K. show or a Bill Burr show and it turn into Oprah. And that's kind of what I felt like. I felt like, um, you know, people kind of expected the funny and the ha-ha, and sometimes they come and they're like, you know, well, dude, I wasn't depressed before, but after listening to Tim's podcast, I tried to kill myself twice. Like, that's really what I was worried about. Um, so I just decided, and eh, let's go ahead and shelve it. And then I started traveling a lot, 2016. Uh, been out in San Diego twice, Florida twice, maybe three times already. Uh, hit up the JV Zoo event, hit up traffic and conversions, hit up funnel hacks. Um, went to an elite mastermind group uh, with the good doctor Ben Atkins. Um, and uh, yeah, got some dates in Dallas. Got an international date on the books coming up that I can't talk about quite yet. Um, but I'm super excited about. And uh, life is good, man. Uh, life is good. So, where the, let's see. That's what I mean. So, we've already had a fumble right here. Just my brain's just like, nope, you know, um, I told you. Told you, maybe the second bottle of the uh, Sprite Scrum, maybe that wasn't a great idea. And we're like, no, you can take it. The brain's like, no, 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 gracias. Speaking of gracias, here's to you. Mm. Thank you for being a listener. So, start traveling, start talking to people. And it was a recurring theme with people. And they were like, dude, what's going on with the podcast? Like, what happened to it? Like, I, I loved it. I listened to it all the time, or I listened to it, you know, f semi-frequently. Um, why aren't you doing it? Do you need to be recording your podcast again? And like, I really enjoyed hearing about your struggles and, you know, things that were going right and things that were going wrong and just kind of hearing your take on stuff. And it wasn't just one person. It was like dozens of people. And it wasn't like at... I don't know the best way to say it. it wasn't like super high guru level all the time or like newbie beginner. It was like people at all. Like I had a couple of big names who were like, dude, where's your podcast? And I'm like, why, why are you listening to this? Why are you listening to my podcast? I mean, if you are listening to my podcast, you've got low standards and something definitely wrong with you. And I'm okay with that because I do too. Right. Uh, so I, that happened. And I was like, hmm. So it started the fire again and started rumbling and rumbling. And it really came to a head last week when I was in Mexico 
two weeks ago actually it's already been two weeks and we're doing our corporate planning for kind of the second half of the year and doing that between lots of tequila lots of drinking all-inclusive resort that's the way to go by the way no cruises no Airbnb uh, all-inclusive is what's right for me for sure um, and I'm starting to think about like what do I want to do to have fun like what something I would enjoy uh, and get some value out of and then the podcast kept coming up so I have decided let's turn this thing back on let's see what happens and I'm not gonna stress out about content and I'm just going to share what's going on with my life, good, bad, or indifferent. And I've got to be okay with that. Some are going to be awesome. Some are going to suck. And you get to be the judge of all of that. And hopefully you'll judge me you know, on a body of work and not just one. And either way, it's cool because uh, basically I'm getting a free therapy session every week uh, that you have to listen to. It's like, make it stop. What is this? What is this asphyxiation with dolls? What's going on with that? Hmm. What happened to that poor child? Hmm. You know, I find the best way to uh, chase a Beck Breckenridge spiced rum, single barrel, small vintage batch, is with a Diet Coke from O'Reilly's Irish Pub, which used to be a breakfast house that still has the grease stains and the decor. I mean, their bathroom toilet, you know those, you know how like commercial toilets, I, I feel like they're different. They're not rounded so much. They're like kind of egg shaped. You, you know what I'm talking about. Just visualize. Not round like at home. They're more egg shaped, right? So I got to take a piss and they have a egg shaped toilet with a round toilet seat. So basically like the first two or three inches of this toilet seat totally exposed when you're sitting. Ladies, you're going like, what's the big deal, Tim? Let me explain to it. Okay. Imagine, imagine if you sat down on a toilet seat protected except for one little edge of the toilet seat that you had to rest your lips on. And you know what I'm talking about by lips. Yeah, well that's pretty much what has to happen there if you've got to sit down to go number two is your balls pretty much have to rest on this sitting STD pile, you know, like this waiting herpes infection. Okay, you got it. I, you want me to move on? I do too. Got it. Um, yeah, so I'm like, all right, well, luckily I don't have to do that. So I peed all over the toilet seat like I do everywhere. You know, just mark my territory. It's an alpha male thing. You wouldn't understand unless you paid Garrett White $60,000 to come punch you in the face. Warriors. Okay, that's what we do. Love you, Garrett, by the way. Phenomenal speaker. That's a no bullshitter. If you ever get a chance to see Garrett White speak, I highly recommend. It. Even if you don't, like I'm not, obviously I tease him. I'm not a big fan of his message. Not a fan. I just, you know, I'm not an alpha male. I don't want to everything, you know. My idea of fun is not doing a Navy SEAL workout every day in a business suit like he does. I mean, but the guy can fucking can command attention of a room. And I've never seen anyone uh, polarize the audience as quickly as he does for his own benefit, um, but also just captivate. Like even people that are like, I do not like this guy are like, holy shit, he's good. Um, so if you get the chance, go check out Garrett White speak because uh, he is uh, he's one of a kind for sure. And I do know, uh, full disclosure, I do know several people that have been through his program and happily, happily want to do that. And it's awesome, it's great, and that's good that they found something that makes them happy, like cupcakes make me happy. Okay, well, we're eight minutes into this thing, and already stumbling, right? Fumble on the field, but we recovered, so we get a chance to, you know, like, whole new set of downs, because we, you know, happen, of course, past the first yard line. Whole new set of downs, Tim, for you to make this happen. Hmm. So let's talk about what else is going on. So much. So much going on, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I'm thinking of taking a summer vacation. What a great way. I just was thinking, like, wait a minute, dumbass. You're starting the podcast back up, and then you're going to take a prolonged absence of time off? Like, that doesn't seem smart at all. Perhaps we wait and hold this off uh, until we're sure we're going to do that. Well, yeah, right now it's just a thought. But I am thinking of taking a summer vacation. It's a graduation time here in the States this week. Texas Tech University and universities across the land uh, let out with a ton of college graduates who, you know, try to go get jobs and stuff like that. But for students who aren't done, you know, they get the summer off. And I remember being a lazy ass kid. The summers were awesome. I'd stay up crazy hours 
I'd sleep till like one, two in the afternoon, not a care or responsibility in the world. And then you go back kind of rested and refreshed for the school year, uh, a little taller, a little smarter, a little brighter, hopefully. And, you know, when you met your friends, um, shit had changed. Like it was like people had grown, you know, some people got braces, some people got taller, some people got skinnier, fatter. Like shit had been different. They had new clothes, new attitude, boobs. Sometimes females even had boobs, I guess. I don't know. Just talk about myself. Um, and I've been thinking about doing that. Uh, it's always been a goal of mine to take a month off a, a year. I've never achieved that. And I, I definitely don't think I'll be doing that. If uh, some things hadn't changed recently, I don't think I would be doing that uh, this year. So I'm like, well, I've always kind of wanted to do that. You know, I'm, I'm in a fortunate spot that I'm good money-wise. And... Um, through the business, our costs are about to go way down staff-wise uh, because we'll be down to zero staff uh, here at the end of the month. Uh, and, you know, so my monthly nut, if you will, to keep the lights on is, is more than absorbable by what I have. And, you know, what would three months away do? Like, and I, I know I couldn't do 100%. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking it would probably be like six days a week, like Monday I'd work just make myself available to any team members that needed me um, or any fires that needed to be put out. Just be like, yeah, I'm only available on Mondays for 12 weeks. And I don't know. I, I really don't know how that would work. Um, but it's something that's very intriguing to me. And I have promised myself that I'm going to seriously look into making that a possibility. I've got some things that uh, are going to prohibit that, like I've got some obligations, a couple events I've already obligated to do, so those would be worked around. So it's not going to be a 100% endless summer situation, but there's there's a good chance that I could have like two solid months. They'd be broken up by an event, but two solid months off, which sounds pretty fucking incredible. Honestly, like every time I say it, I'm like, I don't, this it doesn't sound like a bad thing at all. And the thing I would hope that that time would allow me is some time for some rest and some reflection and kind of deciding on what it is that I want to do, but also maybe help, um, you know, get some other shit back on track. Uh, you know, not, I'm not saying I'm going to be like Greg Luganis or any of that shit. Like, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll look into what a gym looks like, you know, cause it's like, well, if I'm not working, I literally have nothing. Um, but I just think it might be, might be a good idea. It sounds like it'd be fun. Um, it sounds like it would be a unique challenge to just limit my work to one day a week. Just be like, yeah, Hey, I work on Mondays. That's, that's when I'm available. And it's not, you know, it's a non-negotiable. Uh, type thing. So, yeah, very, um, very, very, very interested in that. Uh, just have to make sure it makes sense and that, you know, we're not doing ourselves a disservice. And that I also don't have people in place to kind of make sure, one, first and foremost, customers are taken care of. Um, and then, two, um, that the lights stay on so people to kind of help with affiliate promotions, make sure that we've still got leads and money and all that. I guess, I guess those people refer to as staff. So yeah, I, I gotta do that. That sounds about as fun as getting kicked in the fucking teeth again. But I just have decided that's just gonna be a lifelong thing for me. I, I really do feel like that. You know, and there's... God, I wish it was a holy grail out there uh, to make hiring and training and managing and, and motivating people like I wish there was people out there that had it really perfected and I know people tell you they have it down and they have bits and pieces but no one's got it I mean if you talk to anybody who's got a staff that's their number one gripe is having a fucking staff trying to handle all that stuff how do you pay them how do you praise them how do you punish them how do you motivate them you know how do you you know where's the line how do you know when to scale up and get an next employee and then and the next one and that one and you know what if i go overseas what if i hire local what if i hire remote you know what if i hire single moms what if i hire disability it's just so many fucking choices and the thing that sucks about it is you get better with everyone but you still suck you know, like I know there's a point 
five years down the road where I'm going to think back to this moment right now and think like I owe some fucking people some serious apologies because I was fucking up way hard five years ago. But the thing is, it's not intentional. It's not like you know you're fucking up. I'll just be like, what do you, what do you mean you can't work them to death and yell at them all the time and give them no praise, no food, no money, no incentives, and they quit? Like, who would have thought that? I had no idea. Tell me more of your secrets, please. You know, things like that. So, with that in mind, I, uh, I got to start working on that. But I'm, I have zero motivation to do it. Just candidly speaking, I give zero fucks about staffing right now. I give all fucks about some rest and some reflection. You know, the reflection time is just really going to be like, hey, what do I want to do? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a great tinkerer. I love learning. I love going to events and learning stuff. Like, I love doing the notes because I learn shit. And then I really learn shit because I got to go explain it to people. I did a three-hour, I did two three-hour webinars, or at least two two-hour webinars, so four hours webinar, where we just did Q&A on the Traffic and Conversion Summit notes that we're doing, uh, and the Funnel Hack Live notes that we're doing. And the great thing is, like, that was the funnest thing I'd done all year. Because I just got to be me. I, I was kicking people off the call because they were like, oh, you're dragging on. And it's like, you're a guest in my house. Like, I don't tell you when the chick on Cordon Blue tastes like dog shit. Like, yeah, just, I don't know. But it was just fun. I could be me. And the people that vibe with me were like, by the end of the call, they were like, you know, dude, I'll stay on. Like, you talk till two in the morning. I'm staying. I'm no. One guy told me, I am not leaving this call until you kick me off of it. Like, that's how dedicated he was to staying. And that's crazy. That's a crazy feeling. A lot better than the mundane, like, mm -hmm. that was nice. That was nice. Nice little dopamine release. That was nice. Thank you. It's like, I'm obsessing and stressing over shit. Like, we're doing, uh, uh, we're doing notes as a bonus for anybody, by the way, out there in the uh, digital marketing world. Uh, if you ever buy uh, one of digital marketers' um, courses, their certification courses. They got a new one out for, I think it's uh, SEO. They have one for traffic. Uh, they have like eight courses total. Uh, we are doing the notes for those as a bonus. So when you buy through my link, hit me up at contact timcastman at gmail.com. I'll give you our link. If you buy through our link, well, we send you these notes. Well, we're, we're getting them done. The first set of notes, ladies and gentlemen, are 150 pages. I don't even know how long the course is, but the, this one module like this one certification course, excuse me, is 150 pages. So we go out, we hire people to help us with the graphics and make sure, you know, that we take good notes and all that stuff. We pay them what they want. And then it's like, they get two courses in and they're like, well, um, listen, um, uh, I had no idea how, how much work was involved here. And because of that, like, I want to immediately talk about doubling my money. Like, I want to get paid more because it's obvious that you're doing this professionally, this being me, and making money off of it. Oh, the horror of actually making money in business, right? Um, and I, I want more money. And it's like, we didn't fight with you on the price you, you, that you gave us. We gave you a test. We actually had them test. So they took notes on a webinar and they had to insert slides and all that. So the same thing we're having this done here. I mean, they're, they're doing the same thing. So it's like we switched up the work pattern, but they're like, yeah, we want to double our rate. And I'm like, um, yeah, no, I, that's not going to work for me. Like I just, I paid your wage that you, that you asked, you set, we paid you. Um, and then we said, Hey, here's a cap of hours. But if we go over, we go over, we've never denied you going over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. It's like, we paid your wage. We gave you all the hours you wanted. And now you want more money instead of steady employment. Okay, well, there you go. So, yeah, just a little frustrating. You got that, you got staffing issues. You just, eh. Shut the internet off, bitches. I'll be back in 90 days. No. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's, uh, it's something I um, actually just thought of the other day, but it has been occupying my time and my mind a lot these last couple days. Now, the other side... As we go, Tim goes to therapy. I should get I should get little musical cues and be like, therapy time with Tim. The other side is this. Am I just escaping? Am I just doing that to escape the shit that I have to fix in the business? The personnel changes, the hiring of staff, 
You know, am I just delaying the inevitable? Well, of course I am. Right? It's kind of like when I got out of high school. My parents were like, you going to go to college? I'm like, you save any money? They were like, nope. I was like, well, me neither. Um, plus, you know, I like the school thing, but I'm, I'm not exactly the most popular person in school, and I really would like to not, you know, have to do school, so I'll go in the military. It was just a diversion. Ultimately, I ended up in school, but I need a little break. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just uh, hire my buddy Colin Dario and be like, hey, Colin, just teach me how you're so successful doing so little, you lazy motherfucker. By the way, if you guys don't know, my buddy Colin and I, we rocked a mean tracksuit together. Story about that for another podcast another time. What I want to tell you about Colin that you may not know is he delivered his own child. Ladies and gentlemen, I shit you not. His wife was in labor. They were on the way to the hospital. And guess what? She started having the baby early, and they could not wait. So they pulled over, and in the back of a Honda Odyssey, which he recommends because uh, it's so roomy, um, in the back of the Honda Odyssey, he delivered his own kid. Delivered his own fucking kid, ladies and gentlemen. What a hero. I mean, how do you top that? Oh, yeah, you know, we had a nice little water birth. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, we had little Jenny. You know, they had the maternity ward, and it was great because I was in a hot massage chair. And, you know, Frank was there, and he was just holding my hand. He just made me feel so comfortable. And Colin's like, yeah, I delivered my fucking kid with these two hands in a Honda Odyssey. I bought, I brought life into this world on the side of Highway 140 with these fucking fingers. Like... How do you even... <laughs> well, they gave us extra pillows. Like, no, bitch. You lost. Okay? You lost the war. That's what happened right there. That's just... Oh, it's terrible. It's kind of like when uh, people tell their engagement stories. You know, they'd be like, Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, he took me to my favorite restaurant. Or, oh, yeah, I went to our favorite bar. You know, or, or this or that. And they're like, how'd you guys get engaged? I'm like, oh, yeah, um... I hired a private driver for an entire day to take us to several vineyards in Fredericksburg in Winetown. And then as the sun peaked down almost below the valley and radiated across the hills, I got down on one knee. I pulled out the biggest diamond you've ever seen. This is a fake one, by the way. I tapped her on the shoulder. She turned around and said those fateful words. You gotta be kidding me. And then she ran like a schoolgirl. 100% true, by the way, folks. 100% true. I guess since I've opened that loop, I should close that one. Here we go. So, tap, tap on, on a vineyard, right? Sun setting, picturesque, like romance novel cover, picturesque, right? That's, that's what I planned here. Pull the ring out on one knee, tap, tap, turn around. Alicia Castleman, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen and the most caring woman I've ever met. I love you uh, now, and I would love love to love you forever. Something along those lines. I'll give you a second to wring out your panties, ladies. Sorry. Didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> You're just driving along, and now you got to explain why you had a random orgasm to little Johnny. I'm sorry about that. Please, please forgive me. I know not what I do. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So I do that, and she goes, you got to be freaking kidding me. And what had happened was um, she thought we were going to get kicked out of the vineyard because we were in there. So she was like running so we didn't get kicked out. Okay. I actually fucked up that entire story. I totally did. Because here's what happened. I was getting ready to kneel down. And then she was like, honey, we're in the vineyard. We need to get out of here because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. Two drunk people in a vineyard. I'm sure this has happened before. So instead of that, um, and I've got the ring. I'm ready. I'm doing, I'm doing all the stuff. So instead of that, there's like an old fireplace area, you know, beautiful stone, whatever, but it's a, it's a broken down fireplace. Um, and I'm like, fuck, well, I got to do it. This is the only place I can do it before we go inside. So I break, we have a camera. So I break the camera. I break the little 
fucking door shell, whatever thing. And I'm like, oh, baby, I, I broke this camera. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, can you fix it? You know, and she grabs it, you know, and she's like, oh, let me look at it and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, okay, cool. And she turns around perfectly. I have no idea how this happened, but she turned around perfectly to work on it so that I could get on my knee and I turn around say the thing I said before. I'd say it again, but I don't want to double orgasm you ladies. Yep. I don't want to give you two for one today. No, no. like to tease you, not to please you. Sorry, baby. Anyway, um, and then I asked her to marry me, and she stupidly said yes, and has regretted that for the last 10 years, I'm sure. So, yep, marriage, kids, don't do it. It's amazing. It's awesome. It's great. Uh, yeah, so that uh, that's what's been going on in my fucking life. So what's the future hold? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go on vacay for a little while. Um, well, I don't know if I'm going to just power through and lie to myself and be like, we'll take August off. And then August comes and be like, no, we got to get ready for September. I do not know. But here's what I do know is that I love fucking doing this one. It's good to be back. I have missed you. I really have thought of this thing a million fucking times. And uh, I'm not going to promise you every week. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to commit to anything other than just coming on here and talking when I want to talk and sharing what I want to share. And if you're down with the ride and the journey, it won't always be fun. It won't always be consistent. But uh, I promise you a good time. I promise you the truth for sure. Uh, and most of all, I, I promise you my appreciation to each and every one of you for listening, for reaching out, and for, uh, for Justin and for Sue, who uh, graciously bribed me back on the air uh, with booze. Because I am not a, a man above reproach. I, uh, I will sell my soul for the sticky icky and some boozy woozy. Just a uh, little FYI if you're trying to get me to mail for an affiliate product. Address is at the end of every email that you get from me. Hint, hint, hint. No. All right, folks. I'm out of here. It was good catching up. I got a lot more to share with you. A lot more to tell you. Um, and some fun times ahead. I'll talk to you soon.